quite a few of you have asked me to uh, talk a little bit about the Cambridge interview process and so I thought I'd do a few minutes on that now just to tell you kind of what it was like, what it felt like at the time, but then also give you an example of a couple of questions that, that you can try on your own and, and have some fun with. And so we applied to Cambridge when, well, when I was 17 years old uh, and the process is basically like this. Step one, you take your public exams wherever you are, Gaokao or A-levels in my case. If your uh, results are good enough or you're predicted to get good enough results, you can apply to Cambridge. And so you fill out this application form, you have your predicted grades, you usually have some Tui Jian Shu and these kinds of things, and you submit to one of the two, Oxford or Cambridge, and you have to pick a college. Then if the college thinks that your application credentials are good enough, they'll invite you to an interview. And that interview can take place over the one or two days. During the interview process, step two, you will be, you have an arrangement of interviews and it's not fixed, but typically you'll have at least one subject matter interview. And these are where you get asked technical questions. And then you'll have probably one or two more general interviews where they're trying to figure out whether you'd be a good fit for the college. In addition to that, you're often asked to take written exams nowadays that are set by the, the university. After you've finished that process, you wait maybe four or five weeks and then you get sent a letter uh, telling you whether you got in and if so, what you have to do. So for example, they'll give you target grades that you have to meet, otherwise you, you won't be able to take up your place. Clearly the crucial element is the actual interview days themselves. Now, what do these feel and look like? Well, you get asked technical questions, of course, a lot of technical questions. So in my interviews, I was asked all kinds of things. Like I was applying for science, right? So I was asked things like solving various differential equations for different kind of Newtonian mechanics problems, like parabolic motion was relatively simple, but then they keep on adding more complete, complexifying factors like air resistance, wind resistance, so on and so forth. So you have all this whole, whole set of technical questions that you'll ask. And I won't talk too much about that on this channel because it depends on your subject, right? But then you also typically get asked, well, I guess what you call brain teasers, which are things that you should be able to do without any specific technical knowledge, but just to test like how you think. So I got, I got asked one in this category that required only really, I guess, kind of high school chemistry to do. Uh, and so if, you, if you've done a bit of chemistry, you'll be able to do this question. And I kind of came into the room it's again, it's kind of very old. You know, the college is like four or 500 years old. I went to Christ College, Cambridge. And you kind of go into this room. It's like an English drawing room. It's got like little tea sets and these like sofas and so on. It looks very casual and informal. All these books on the wall. And you've got this kind of middle-aged professor who's obviously an expert in this field sitting there. He invites you in. I sat down, he said hello to me. We exchanged a few pleasantries. And then the first question he hit me with was so, so how many atoms of helium are in this room? And that was my question and that's what I had to calculate. So if you've done a bit of chemistry, have a go. Uh, this is kind of like the warm-up question. Following that, there were 30 minutes of technical questions, but this is kind of like, I guess, the gateway question. If you can't answer that, then you're not going anywhere really. So that was the question I got asked. But there is another question that I want to kind of pose to you all. Uh, I'll post the answer later. I'm sure most of you will get it, but like, it's kind of fun, I thought. Uh, and so here's the question. We have three people, we'll call them Alice, Bob, and Charlie and they're sitting in a row so they're all looking forward so Alice can see Bob and Charlie, uh, Bob can see Charlie, Charlie can't see anyone right and they're all expert logicians and they always tell the truth and their father is going to put on two different types of hats on each of these people a red hat or a blue hat and then he's going to ask them some questions. Question number one their father puts a hat on each of their heads and says each of your hats is either red or blue at least one of you has a red hat. Alice then says I know the colour of my hat. What colour is each person's hat? Question number two. Their father puts a new hat on each of their heads and again says, each of your hats is either red or blue. At least one of you has a red hat. Alice then says, I don't know the colour of my hat. Bob says, I don't know the colour of my hat. What colour is Charlie's hat? Question number three. Their father puts a new hat on each of their heads and says, each of your hats is either red or blue. At least one of you has a red hat. And at least one of you has a blue hat. Alice says, I know the color of my hat. Bob then says, mine is red. What color is each person's hat? Question number four. Their father puts a new hat on each of their heads and says, each of your hats is either red or blue. At least one of you has a red hat and at least one of you has a blue hat. Alice then says, I don't know the color of my hat. Bob then says, my hat is red. What color is Charlie's hat? Finally, 
their father puts a new hat on each of their heads and says, each of your hats is either red or blue. Two of you who are seated adjacently both had red hats. Alice then says, I don't know the color of my hat. What color is Charlie's hat? And so have a go at that, those, those five different questions. Try and imagine yourself, you're sitting in an interview room or something with this old professor opposite you, kind of staring at you, kind of working it out on a piece of paper. Uh, and then you kind of feel a little bit what it's like to be in the room. But uh, I'll publish the answer later on, but uh, I hope everybody has fun with the puzzle. Uh, I thought it was pretty entertaining to do.